Speaker, as I said, we agreed that 2021, it should not be business as usual. But it seems that uh, we have started on the same business as usual, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I was shocked when I read yesterday that the first shipment of iron ore by King Ho Mining took place last Friday. I was shocked. Mr. Speaker, I saw it through a publication by Reuters. There is no way we will ship iron ore without having an agreement ratified by this house. It should not happen, Mr. Speaker. Under what terms and conditions we can ship iron ore? We don't have any details. We don't know the quantity of tailings on the ground. We don't know the conditions under which they're going to take over. They have not mined a single ore, but yet still they have exported ore. On what conditions, Mr. Speaker? And if you go to section 40 of the Constitution, it is very, very clear, Mr. Speaker. And you will tie that with section 110, because there is no way they will have shipped this iron ore after having repaired the rail which is also a property of the government of Sierra Leone. That way also is the property of the government of Sierra Leone. So for them to use it, there might have been conditions, financial or otherwise. And 110 makes it very clear whether we are going to waive, we are going to impose, etc. Parliament must give it approval. Mr. Speaker, many things are going on which are not supposed to go on. And um, I think I'll be engaging the leader of government business after this sitting. Last year, we raised issues on specific agreement. One of them came, the other is yet to come to this house. We have to stop these things, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, with your permission, if you go to section 40 of the Constitution, the executive powers of the President, Mr. Speaker, even when he delegates, the proviso is very clear that any treaty agreement or convention executed by, which is done by the president, or under the authority of the president, it must come to this house. And Mr. Speaker, the all that was on ground belongs to the people of this country. We want the benefits, yes, but we must follow the procedures. So on that note, Mr. Speaker, I am urging you to get the Minister of Mines to come to this house and explain to us what are the terms and conditions entered so far and that they must stop all shipment until we get an agreement ratified by this house. The issue of the day, an agreement between the government of Sierra Leone and King Investment Company Limited for the sale of iron ore stockpile at the Pempel Port has been approved by Cabinet. This agreement has taken effect and the first consignment of iron ore from the, Pepe, from the port of Pepel as it was exported yesterday. Also, the government of Sierra Leone, through the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources, has commissioned the country's first large scale gold mining plant in Color District. This development will pave the way for the production of gold bullion in the country. To give us more insights on the first shipment of the iron ore stockpile of the country's first large scale gold mining, we have the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources to go to the bar. I'll invite him to the podium. Mr. Minister. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Madam Minister. Minister of Technical and Higher Education, um, members of the Fourth Estate. Uh, it's indeed a great privilege um, to update the nation, our people, on the state, the general state of the mining sector that it was recently done. And it's in a similar fashion, it is quite often done to keep the population abreast with information in the mining sector. Um, I've got a press release that I'm going to read, um, in, and this is in, in line with uh, the set topic of the discussion, which is the government of Sierra Leone signs the one-off advanced pricing agreement with King O Investment Company Limited for the sale 
of high evolve. Kimo Mining Company Limited was granted a large scale mining license by the government of Sierra Leone on, um, sorry, on July of 2000 and, um, 2020. And Kimo started operations and on December 21st, 2020, Kimo Investment Limited, the parent company for Kimo Mining Company Limited and Kimo Rail and Port Company Limited submitted an expression of interest, EOI, to export iron ore mineral products stockpile, here referred to as iron ore stockpile, situated at Kepel Port, site on behalf of the government of Sierra Leone on a commercial basis. The expression of interest as submitted by Kimo Investment Company Limited covers the iron ore stockpile at the Kepel Port site only. The expression of interest also drew the attention of the government of Sierra Leone to the fact that the iron ore stockpile is being stored on a pad that will be used by Kimo Mining Company Limited for stockpiling its iron ore transported from the Tonkolili mine site and will be in, which will be in production at the end of the first quarter and the second quarter of this year. Furthermore, Kimo Investment Company Limited indicated that considering the volume of iron ore stockpile and the space it occupies at the Bell Port, agreeing to export the iron ore stockpile now will create sufficient space for its incoming iron ore from the Tonkodili mine site. The government of Sierra Leone on 8th of January 2021 concluded the government uh, concluded a rail agreement between GOSL and Kimo um, for the purposes of operating the Tonkolili and the Pepe Railway and Port facilities. Also, the two subsidiary companies of Kingo Investment Company Limited, i.e. Kingo Mining Company Limited and Kingo Rail and Port Company Limited, are at a very advanced stage of mobilization and site preparation to commence operations at the Tonkolili mine site and Pepe Port respectively. These recent developments put Kingo Investment Company Limited in a better position to have the right of first refusal to export, in this case a one-off commercial basis, the iron ore stockpile at the prepared port on behalf of the government and the people of this country. Having thoroughly assessed the situation both locally, i.e. nature of the iron ore product, current state of the preparedness of and the acquisition of rights to operate the rail and port by King o Rail and Port Company Limited, and internationally, given the current global price of iron ore, the government asked King o Investment Company Limited to tentatively make marketing arrangements and secure a third party buyer for the iron ore stockpile that is situated at the Pepel Port. In January of this year, the National Minerals Agency conducted a detailed assessment and verification exercise which included volumetric drone survey at the propel port to ascertain the tonnage, i.e. the quantity and quality of the iron ore already stockpiled at the site. And they also collected representative samples of the iron ore stockpiles for laboratory analysis to ascertain the product quality, including moisture content and, transport and transportable moisture limits. The iron ore product from the town called the mine site historically fetches a considerably low price in comparison to the benchmark price of iron ore product with a similar iron content, known to display an extremely large range in product specifications depending on, for example, their geological properties, the geography, climate of the area it is mined in, etc. Accordingly, even when Accordingly, even though the iron ore product from the Tonkoli mine site has a 57 to 58% ferrous content and thus falls into the bracket covered by flat TSI, which is around 58% um, iron content, it became evident that this product was always valued significantly lower than the benchmark product due to its inferior specifications. Not only does this product display a much higher Alumin, uh, alumina, which is aluminium trioxide mm -hmm. uh, content, and then um, which is commonly referred to, well, it is preferred in the iron ore contents to be in the range of about six to seven percent instead of 1.5 prescribed by the benchmark. So this is an indication of an inferior uh, substance based on the content of alumina, alumina that is above the benchmark of 1.5 percent. 
It also has extremely high levels of moisture content. The benchmark for plant is 9%. And what we're talking about here is 15% moisture content, given the fact that this product has been lying idling at the bottom point for the past three years. Bearing in mind that the last time um, iron ore was exported from this country was in November, December of 2017. Three to four rainy seasons have come and gone. So those are all those factors have all depreciated the value of this particular iron ore uh, in question. Moreover, this product is also made by a large loss of what we call ignition and general efficiency losses in handling of the product due to the high clay content and chemical properties of the ore. When it, when it, when the substance is over moisture, it sort of you know accumulates a lot of water, and especially being a bulk, you have difficulties in handling this product, and they lose their ignition properties. The metals are conductors, as you know. I mean, we've got science people here, and with water and all of those, and they definitely lost what they call the LOI, loss of ignition. Um, the, min the, mine, the, min the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources and the Na National Minerals Agency, in collaboration with the relevant MDAs, estimated a fair on the stockpile, a fair price on the stockpile, iron ore mineral product as it leaves the Pepel port. However, it is important to note that the sales of iron product seldom take place at this point as the iron ore product leaves the port. So the method chosen was determined by a trade-off between the ease of administration and the desire to provide an economically efficient and equitable system. In this specific case, the valuation point included published price, including deductions, given the specification of the iron ore product in question, and free mm -hmm. on board FOB, deduct freight cost, insurance, any legal cost, quality adjustment and marketing fees, ETC. The government of Sierra Leone and Kingo Investment Company Limited negotiated a one-off advanced pricing agreement, APA, prior to the export of the iron ore stockpile at the Bell port, subject to a cabinet concurrence, which was of course given to us by the relevant ministry, i.e. the Ministry of Justice and that of the Ministry of Finance. These concurrences were sought out because when it comes to legal issues, we have to get recommendation and we have to get no objection from the Ministry of Justice and no objection from the Ministry of Finance, especially given the fact that the export of this particular stockpile we're talking about is at no cost to the government, it's off balance sheet. As part of the one-off ABA negotiation process, the NMA, the Ministry of Mines, the Ministry of Finance and the NRA ensure that King Investment Limited committed to providing certain critical information in relation to the sale of the iron ore stockpile at the Bepel port. The document included provision on invoice, freight invoice from carrier, draft survey report, sales contract with third party, copy of certified laboratory report for shipment samples taken, custom certificate at the port of entry, i.e. that that is uh, um, for instance, uh, one down in China, find an invoice, supporting document that can explain all differences between the plant iron ore stockpile, uh, stock price, and the quoted base price. Uh, for example, the size of the particles and the penalty for its moisture, ETC. I will explain these ones um, later on. And an Excel file tracking shipment and status of availability of the requested document, as well as provisional, revised, and final invoices that are all provided to the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources and the undermentioned um, stakeholding institutions. The ownership of the iron ore stockpile undoubtedly at the Pepel Ports Airport rests with the state and under the authority of the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources. <coughs> Hence, the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources urgently put modalities in place through the cabinet to legally and morally and ethically authorize Kingo Investment Company Limited to export a one-off economic base, a commercial basis, as agreed in the one-off advanced pricing agreement of the iron ore stockpile at the Pepel on behalf of the state. End of press, my press release. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> I want to draw your attention uh, to the fact that the Constitution reposes the authority in Section 62 to the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources to manage efficiently within the laws the mineral resources of this country. 
And so, as stated in the press release, he knew we were all gathered here some few weeks ago when we publicly disclosed to the media and to the entire country that the government entered an agreement with Kimo rail and port for the tentative use of the rail and port facility that was diplomatically, professionally, and carefully secured on behalf of the people of this country. This rail and port facility has a direct connectivity with the Tongolili iron ore minefield. Kimo, being a mineral rights holder of that particular mine, has got the first right of refusal in terms of exporting or producing iron ore and using that infrastructure. When Kimo took over this rail and port and they were doing their necessary care and maintenance, they discovered that the government has got 120 metric tons of iron ore sitting on the pile at Pepeo. And then they requested through the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources that they would want the government to indicate what government would want to do with the iron ore stockpile because the railing port was under their stewardship and they needed the path for the, the path at the Pepeo port for the exportation of their products that would be produced from the Tonkonili mine. But because of the interest of the people of our country and taking advantage of the high price of iron ore in the market presently, we indicated our willingness and we went into an agreement. And this agreement was concurred by stakeholding institutions and this agreement was taken to cabinet and cabinet gave its assent to it, its approval that this particular iron ore should be shipped out on, for the people, on behalf of the people of this country. What will interest you is that previously, or no time in the history of the mining sector has the advanced pricing agreement been made public. But we've chosen to make it public and we made sure we ticked all the metrics required for the exploitation of this exploitation of this iron ore product, i.e. We made sure the shipper, on behalf of the government, indicated clearly the buyer, the off-taker, the person who's going to buy the iron ore on the other part of the divide. They presented to us the contract. They negotiated contract between the company, the shipper, and the off-taker. All these documents were provided to the stakeholding institutions who fitted the APA and gave their concurrence to the effect. And also, they provided invoices. We also communicated with the off-taker in China to make sure that there is no, um, there's, there's no transfer pricing, that Kingo Investment Company have no commercial relationship or contractual relationship outside of the shipment of this oil. Because in the past, we've had companies who've come to this country who are doing transfer pricing. They indicate one pricing formula to the state, and they transfer the assets to their sister or brother companies and fleece the nation of its needed revenues. We made sure we got all those documents. And then ocean moving vehicles baited into the shores of Sierra Leone last week and got to the Kim uh, to the Kim and uh, to the Pebble port in in in, in Potloko district. And these OVMs started loading the stockpile from the site into these vessels to be transferred into the barge or the ship that will be taking this iron ore out of the country. The world we are living in is a social media world and everybody has got access to pictures and all of those. People took pictures of this process and indicated that the iron ore has already left this country without due process. So cabinet, we, had to, we, we were shocked and surprised. Cabinet had given its assent, its approval, and with this approval, we were able to sign the, the advanced pricing agreement. And what is interesting, the government of Sierra Leone is going to fetch 70% of the revenue that is coming from the sale of this iron ore. Whereas the shipper, who ships it on behalf of the government of Sierra Leone, they are in all the cost of shipment, they are in all the cost of handling, they are in all the risk of exporting the iron ore from this country will take the 30% of the sharing agreement. For the first time, normally, government only always gets royalty of 3%. And the iron ore we're talking about is 120 metric tons. The 120 metric tons sold at a price, an agreed price, 
of 120 United States dollars by metric ton. If you do the arithmetic of that, it gives you to the range of about 12 million dollars and take 70% of that and put it to the government. The government has never in the history of this country exported that equivalent volume of iron ore and make more than 3% out of that. Right, ladies and gentlemen. So, I agree there's been a lot of hue and cry about transparency and accountability. We contacted the Minister of Information and Communication on Monday that we want to come to the Ministry for a press conference on Thursday. I will find it really interesting that if somebody is taking any authentic information pertaining to the mining sector, it should come from the Ministry of Mines and Mineral Resources. And so here we are today updating the people of this country that a clear, transparent, and accountable deal has been stricken on their behalf, and this deal has got the approval of Parliament. And where it is required for this particular agreement to be taken to Parliament, it will definitely be taken to Parliament for ratification. So, as I speak to you, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday we signed the advance uh, pricing agreement with Kingwood Investment Company, and the ship left the international waters around Seredo and sailed off for China. That ship will arrive in China in the second week of March. That ship went with iron ore, quantity of 40,000 metric tons. And the iron ore content of that particular stockpile that has been shipped is around 56 to 57 percent ferrous content, with 6 to 7 percent aluminium trioxide and, and silica. Um, the 120 have not, it's not been entirely shipped out. We're doing it in phases. When the ship takes the first 40,000 metric tons out, it will come back at the end of March to collect the second batch of 40,000 metric tons and come back at the end of April to collect the third consignment. But I also want to let you know that what is on the ground may not be the exact volume that will be transported out to China. It could be plus or minus, depending on how uh, the shippers will be able to handle the product, given the fact that the product is of high moisture content and we, they encounter difficulties in, in, in handling the product. Uh, besides that, um, there's also a very fantastic news for the people of this country. Throughout the history of mining in this country, Sierra Leone has never, ever mined gold at a commercial large scale, never. In 2019, the government of His Excellency the President, Dr. Julius Pada Bio, awarded license to a Chinese firm called Longo Mining Investment Company Limited. They gave them the mineral, they were given the mineral rights to produce gold from the Nimini Hills. Before 2018, Nimini Hills was a cause for many deaths in Nimikoro and Nimiyama Chipdom because of the indiscriminate and uncontrollable illegal mining that was taking place in that particular area. The wisdom of His Excellency the President and the Minister of Mines and Mineral Resources and that of the NMA decided to transition the gold mining from artisanal, some, in some cases illegal and illicit mining, to large-scale commercial mining. One man was given this license and in less than two years, this company has commissioned the country's first large-scale gold processing plant, for which we were invited yesterday to commission that plant, and the first bullion of gold was produced from Sierra Leone. I think that is good news. We must celebrate that. And besides, besides the long um plant launching, um, there is another gold, large-scale gold mining company that is doing development of its field, and that is in Kwanadugu district. We expect that gold mine, or that gold field, to produce its first bullion before the end of this year. So things are coming up. The mining sector is not what speculators would think. We are revising the Mines and Minerals Act, and we intend to make that act the representation of the interests of the people of this country, to make sure we benefit from our natural resources. Every contract that we get into on behalf of the people of this country will be transparent 
and will remain accountable to the people of this country. Thank you very much.